All right, today we're gonna play with the shader graph in Unity. All right, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna use the lightweight render pipeline and AR foundation to utilize the shader graph. That's how we're gonna make that swirly uh, portal effect. And then we're also gonna utilize the uh, stencil buffer so that we can create a kind of mask inside our portal so we can only view uh, what's on the other side of the portal through our portal window. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is go to github.com slash third dash Aurora. Go to our repositories and we need to get the repository that we worked on in the last video, which is AR Foundation Lightweight Render Pipeline. So click that and download the zip. So while this is downloading, if you did not watch the last video, we basically just got the lightweight render pipeline and the bloom effect working with AR Foundation. Okay, so before we get started, a couple things. Unity is in like a weird place right now where I feel like a lot of things aren't working. One of those things being the shader compiler on Unity 2019.2. So this video, I am using 2019.2, and I believe if, you, if you're running iOS 13.2, the shader compiler is not working and you're gonna get everything's gonna be pink. So just be wary of that. I have heard of people being able to use the shader compiler from 2019.3 and put it into this version of Unity and that seems to be okay, but I'm not gonna do that in this video. I'm just gonna build to, I or build to Android rather. But um, you could also try to do this tutorial on Unity 2019.3 and it would probably work. I just, it is not tested. So just be wary of that. Okay, so once you got this project opened up in Unity, you can go to Scenes and Main. This is the scene that we're gonna be working in. So one thing that I did notice is if you go to Default Plane, uh, for whatever reason, we're missing this material. So we just need to add a ground plane material so that it doesn't show up pink. Uh, so right click in the Materials folder and add a material and just call it, I don't know, ground, uh, call it ground plane, sure and then go back to that default plane and drag this in here. It doesn't really matter much what it looks like in my opinion, but you can change that if you want. And then one other thing is on this content parent, um, delete the mesh render here and the plane. Um, I had shadows rendering on that at one point, but that's gonna complicate this project, so we're just gonna leave that off for now. Now underneath the content parent, let's create an empty game object and let's call this portal. This is gonna be where we put our portal frame and everything. Uh, so let's make another game object and just call it portal frame. And then create a cube. Let's scale it by like 0.1. Let's go, uh, yeah, go two and then 0.1. This will be our first post. And so we're gonna put that at one on the Y. That looks pretty good. Let's set the X to negative uh, 0.5 and then duplicate that and set this to positive 0.5. So we got a good looking frame there. Duplicate it one more time and let's make the top frame. All right, it looks like a pretty good frame there. Now let's um, minimize that and then right click and create a uh, 3D object quad. And this is gonna be uh, our actual portal that we're gonna render that effect on. So let's call it portal swirl. And then get this in the appropriate position. Okay, cool. That looks good. Now let's make our portal frame uh, wooden, actually. So let's go to Google. All right, this looks pretty good. And then let's make right-click assets, create a new folder, and just call this images. Drag our wood JPEG into there. And then for materials, right-click, make a new material. And um, I don't know, we'll go wood mat. We don't have to do anything special with this because it's going to render outside our portal. So just drag that onto our cube and put our wood texture in there. And then don't forget, drag this material onto everything here. That does not look great, but I don't know. We're rolling with it for now. All right, so now in my opinion, we're gonna do the funnest part of this tutorial, which is making this twirl effect. So let's go create shader uh, PBR graph and just call this twirl. So double click that to open it in shader graph. Now this effect is going to be, uh, we're gonna need the shader to be transparent. So click up here, surface, change that from opaque to transparent. And then the first thing that we're gonna to need to do, we'll minimize that, is create a twirl node. And then if we were to hook this up just by itself, it's not gonna do anything. So we need to create a noise node and we're gonna pass the twirls output into the UV of the simple noise and then the output of that to the alpha channel 
of our master node. And then if you change the offset of this twirl, you can see that it moves around. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is change the color of our shader, because right now it doesn't look great. So let's go up here into these exposed properties and add a color. So we're gonna want this to be HDR so we can give it a cool glow effect. So let's make it blue for now. We can change this later, but set the intensity to like two. And then if we drag this into the editor here, you'll see that it gives us a little color node. So what we need to do now is create a multiply node. And then we want to multiply our color by the simple noise. And then put that into our emission channel. And now you can see it's respecting our emissive color that we can set in the editor. Now the last thing we're gonna to wanna to do, do in here is actually make this move. So we're gonna make a time node. And then we're gonna create a multiply node. And then what we're gonna do is multiply the time in here by some number and then output that to the offset of our twirl. So you can see when you change this value, things start moving. So now we probably wanna be able to change this twirl speed in the editor. So let's add a property and we'll make it a vector one and we'll call it twirl speed. Okay, cool. We'll set the default value just so we can see something moving in here to point one and then drag twirl speed into the editor here and drag that in as that value there. Cool, okay, now we can change our speed. And then the last thing is, this value is way too high up here. We're probably gonna wanna lower this a lot. So let's actually make another property, another vector one, and just call this twirl amount. So drag this twirl amount in here and let's map it to this X value there. And then let's set this default to like, I don't know, 50. Let's save this and let's apply it and let's do the rest of the fixing in the editor here. So on our per portal swirl, we're gonna have to make a new material, call the material swirl, drag it onto there, and then inside uh, this material instance, um, find shader graphs and twirl. Actually, let's hit play so we can preview this because my computer is chugging along here and it's not moving in the editor. Okay, yeah. Okay, so now we need to make our actual portal shader. So right click shader and just go, I don't know, standard surface shader for now and call this portal. This is gonna be, like I said, actually our portal window. Okay, so everything in here, we can actually just delete it and let's just start from scratch here. Let's go shader and we're gonna call this custom portal. And then we need to make a sub shader function. Now we don't want this to actually render anything. So we're gonna go Z right off, color mask zero, and call off. Then let's make let's make a pass function before I forget. I'm not gonna put anything in there. And then we're gonna go stencil. We're gonna go ref one, comp always, pass replace. So we're setting the reference value of this uh, shader as one on the stencil buffer and we're doing comp always so that the stencil test is always set to pass. Okay, so back in Unity, right click and create a material and this is gonna be our portal material. Let's call it portal clear just to be sure. And then we actually wanna duplicate this portal swirl and we'll call this portal clear. And then drag that portal clear material onto this. And then we need to go to custom and portal. And it should be clear, it shouldn't do anything. Fantastic. Now, this is the tricky part. Basically what we're gonna do now is we need to create a material that is going to render inside the portal. So you're only gonna be able to see it through the portal window. But we need to be able to do it with the shader graph and there does not seem to be a way to add a stencil buffer in the shader graph editor. So we're gonna do something a little bit different here. But first of all, let's right click and let's create another shader PBR graph. And we're just gonna call this, we're gonna call this temp. So open this up and then what we're gonna do here is that we actually just really want to create a just like a really basic standard shader so um, let's create a, a sample 2d sample 2d texture and um, let's just map the uh, RGBA to the albedo and then we'll expose a texture 2d in here uh, let's drag this node into here hook that up and then this should render yeah this is basically all we wanted to do, is just render a texture. 
So what we're going to do from here is right click on the master node and we're going to go show generated code. Okay, so in here is where we need to say what to do with the stencil buffer. So right before this pass function, we'll create our stencil function. We'll go ref zero, comp not equal, and pass keep. So basically what we're saying here, uh, we're going to keep the pixels if it is not equal to what's on the other uh, stencil buffer. So as you can see, reference value is zero before we used one. Um, now this comp function is actually like an enum. If you wanted to, I did this in a different video, but uh, if you wanted to expose this as a public property, you could do that and then uh, edit that at runtime. So for example, if you wanted to like show everything when you're inside the portal, uh, you would change that comp value there. But we're not gonna do that today, but just know that that is possible. But what we need to do from here is actually copy all of this code and we're gonna have to put it in a regular shader because if you were to actually save this, uh, it does not save with the uh, shader graph. So we can now delete our temp uh, shader graph there and right click and just create a standard shader. And we're gonna call this uh, inside portal. So now we'll open back up this inside portal shader and we're just gonna copy all of that code that we had from our shader graph and then just rename this uh, custom inside portal. So now back in Unity, let's right click and create a material and we're gonna call this uh, inside portal. Let's put our custom inside portal shader on there and then let's just test it out and make sure it works. So underneath, well right click on portal and just go create empty, rename this environment. And then under here, 3D object, just make a cube. And then let's drag our inside portal material onto it. So you can see that you can only see it through this portal window. Okay, so let's delete this. And then I used a church uh, in, the, in the intro. So let's go to the asset store and let's just get that same asset that I used. And um, I'll show you how to set that up. Okay, so type in environment church. I think that's what I used. And then, yes, this should be the one, yeah. Like third one down, church model, it's free. Uh, let's download this and import it. Okay, so once this is imported, go to this church folder and go to prefabs and you'll see one for the church. It looks a little bit purple right now because the shaders aren't compiling, so that's what we need to fix. So we drag this into the scene and let's, I don't know, let's center this a little bit. Bring this into view of our portal. Okay, cool. That looks pretty good. What we're going to want to do is go back to our materials folder in our inside portal material. Oh, you know what? First of all, expand this, right click, unpack prefab completely. On all these materials here, we want to change the shader to custom inside portal. And then for the texture, select this one here. That's the one that they use. So let's just go down, go down all these and just do it for every single one. Okay, cool. So we got that. All right, on to the last one. Cool. So now let's do it for the, actually the flag has a different texture. I believe it is that one, yeah. So let's do that. Door parts, let's make sure we get these as well. And I think that is everything. Yeah, cool. So that is everything. Now, one thing that you might notice here is when you zoom in and out, the church is disappearing. I am not 100% sure why that is happening, but I believe it has to do with this render queue. So if we just, I think we can increment it by one. I'm hoping. Okay, yeah, that seemed to work. We just needed to increment it by one, but rather than doing it on all the different material instances here, let's just go into our inside portal shader and let's just change the render queue in there. Okay, so yeah, in here, geometry plus one. And then hopefully that takes care of it. So let's build this out and see what I screwed up. All right, so everything is looking pretty good. Ground plane detection is working. Yeah, there's our portal. There's our church. And hopefully our toggle still works. Yeah, cool. Everything's looking pretty good. All right, so that's it. Let me know in the comments um, what you guys want to see in our next tutorial. And uh, with that, I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.